concerns that this this whole saga may affect bilateral relations between I mean, it's, this is a concern and it's an observation. Comments have been made by the public on this. And I think I, I can understand where that comes from. Uh, what I would like to be quite clear is this. Uh, as with all incidents involving foreign nationals, part of the protocols would obviously be to deal with the foreign embassies. <clears throat> and we have done so in this case. Uh, and that's the correct thing to do. And work, obviously, with the numbers involved, I mean, we've been working very closely with the Chinese embassy on this matter. Secondly, it's important to also understand that this is not a bilateral issue. This is an issue where laws are violated. In this case, uh, the SMRT bus drivers overstepped the boundaries. They broke the law by participating in an illegal strike. Um, I think it's important not to politicize the issue. Uh, like I said, as with every national in any country, you abide by the laws of the land. And in this case, these laws were violated. It so happens that these SMRT drivers come from the People's Republic of China and we will have to let the law unfold and take the necessary action. We have made it quite clear to the Embassy and they understand that. Should we be concerned about public safety because you know, there are Chinese bus drivers who are I understand that concern, but like I mentioned earlier, it's important to realise that we can't generalise um, the behaviour and actions of a number of these individuals uh, and to apply it across the board. I think many of the drivers, both PRC and of other nationalities and our own local Singaporean drivers, do diligently carry out their duties every day um, for the longest time. And I think I was reading the papers today, the SMRT CEO has also highlighted that they have been very hardworking and diligent and there's no reason to suppose otherwise. Uh, clearly, the companies themselves have taken measures to speak to all the drivers concerned to make sure that any perceptions and misperceptions are laid, concerns are addressed, so that they understand what happens. And this is important. And I would suggest that it doesn't just extend to management alone. It really extends to all Singaporeans who are participating in that conversation, especially online, about what we say, what we say, how we say it, because it often also elicits reactions. And you, and you can see there are many reactions. Some very extreme on one end, where some very extreme on the other. But all this basically, you know, um, can take on a life of its own. I don't think it necessarily will spill over into real life, but it does create unnecessary concerns and anxiety, which is why I think it's important for us to reflect that even as we have concerns about issues like this, it's important for us to be circumspect about the way we respond, the way we converse and talk, because it does reflect on us, not only just as individuals, but society as well. But I would say that drivers bus drivers have been working hard, responsibly and safely ferrying Singaporeans to and fro. I mean, there's a high traffic that takes place every day and there's no reason to believe that uh, that would not continue. If I could just add to that, um, I think it's fair to say that some of the drivers regretted their actions. And also, um, they have chosen to go back to work. So I think we should not cast out, firstly, on their competence, and secondly, also on their willingness and commitment to perform their jobs to the best of their abilities. I think any more of this uh, casting of aspersions uh, on their willingness uh, to do their jobs properly is not helpful. I think we want to encourage them to continue this conversation with the management, resolve their differences, and most importantly, we want them to actually continue to put the safety of the commuters, commuters as their first priority, so that when they carry out their duties, they know that no one is doubting them, but in fact, they should redouble their efforts to prove that they are worthy uh, of uh, having been retained. So I think that is a very important tone that we want to set. Instead of going around, you know, uh, believing that uh, they are not going to do their jobs properly. Are the conditions for these 29, uh, would they ever be able to work here again? Mm. Well, for these 29 that are given warnings, uh, their work pass will be revoked, they will be repatriated and sent back. Uh, we will look at whether the, they will be allowed to come back. That's, uh, that's something that we're looking at right now. So perhaps at this point in time, uh, I would not like to comment specifically on that question. Um, 
Paul, let me re- uh, emphasize again. For these, uh, the rest of them, uh, warnings will be given. Uh, SMRT, I believe, have already started uh, quite extensively engaging them to make sure that um, they are speaking to them, explaining to them the situation, what is going to happen. What I want to make it quite clear is that as of now, barring further developments, uh, the rest of these drivers will not be charged and we will be handling, I mean, SMRT will manage them accordingly. Uh, as I understand it, they will continue. But SMRT continues to engage them to make sure that uh, they understand the situation and their concerns are allayed. So I believe that SMRT is, uh, as we speak, uh, have already started looking into this and I think managing them as best as they can. As, as we understand and from the feedback both from our officers, from MOM, LTA, I think many of them are quite, uh, as you would expect, as a result of this incident, uh, quite circumspect, uh, quite muted. Uh, about what has happened, but um, certainly many of them realise the severity of what they've done. And uh, I think many of them just want to move on and continue on driving and uh, doing what they were doing previously.